a Canadian Radio Sanctuary podcast. Our guest is Brian Antonson, a proud member of the Fraser Valley who lives in Mission. And Brian, the retired Associate Dean of BCIT's Broadcast and Media Communications Department. Leading up to all that, Brian, you were in radio and of course you went on to teach radio and more at BCIT for many years. Take us back to your childhood, if you will. When you were a kid growing up in South Burnaby, when did the radio bug hit you? 1962, and my father brought home from work uh, a small amplifier and a small RCA Victor uh, 45 record player and a couple of speakers and a microphone. And he said, that this is what the disc jockeys use. And you might hook that up and see if you can do something with that. And I was a fan of radio. I loved the music of 1961 and 62 and all of those different things. Been a big fan ever since then. So I hooked it up and I could actually do it. I actually could introduce a record and I could throw in a weather forecast and things like that. So I was caught and I had a hobby radio station uh, that I built from all of that material uh, in my basement as, as a teenager. Started the campus radio station at Simon Fraser in 1966 when I went there as a uh, as a student and then could not wait to get into broadcasting. So I jumped to the BCIT broadcast program uh, in 1967. And shortly thereafter, I started working at uh, CKNW as an operator and then got on full time when I graduated. And the rest is, is history. CKNW for years, uh, ultimately uh, production director there, which is something I just love doing, all the music recording and commercials and things like that. And then uh, BCIT came calling and said, how would you like to teach night school? And that led to day school. And along the way, I had a two-year leave managing the radio station in Abbotsford, CFER 850, and then back to BCIT. And so I had a quarter century of leading the team, of which uh, you were a, a valuable member uh, that uh, has introduced so many people to broadcast careers uh, in British Columbia. It's been a grand run. I just want to go back and just mention that for a lot of people who aren't familiar with some of the terminology in radio, when one says you were an operator in radio, what exactly is that? CKNW had an evening run that had in, in, involved, uh, it had uh, Jack Webster, uh, Dave Abbott, Jack Cullen, legendary news people like John McKittrick and John Ashbridge and Rob Malcolm. Uh, Big L. Davidson, these were all part of the evening run from 6 until midnight. Much of that programming, the Websters, the uh, Abbots, the Cullens, and so on, all occurred in downtown Vancouver. And so somebody had to be in the CKNW studios in U.S. Minster operating, pressing the buttons, bringing in commercials, newscasts, and, and things like that, and announcing the half-hourly Are You Listening winner. <laughs> that was my first thing on the air. Are you listening? After the 8 o'clock news, CKNW offered. <laughs> it was a wonderful introduction <laughs> to radio. So I got to be an operator and spent my evenings through most evenings and uh, weekends at CKNW while I was going to school, applying all the things. Things I was learning at school. So when you were at BCIT, one thing that stands out, I recall your opening day message to all the students, and one part of that, a little piece of that, but very important, was, and, and correct me if I'm paraphrasing, but basically you said, remember the six o'clock news doesn't start at 6.01. Yes, oh, I used that many, many times in my uh, night school classes, day school classes, and as you say in that, that uh, introductory uh, welcome uh, to everybody when I uh, would greet them on the, the first day of school in September. And that was about the, the importance of the timing in radio. Many stations would have a time tone. People tune in because they expect that the news is going to be on the air at 6 o'clock or at 4 o'clock or whatever. So I wanted to make sure that everybody understood right off the top, very, very important thing, that the 6 o'clock news goes on at 6 o'clock. Don't get late into the booth. Don't show up uh, at 6.03 or whatever and hope that everybody's waiting for you. It's an important thing. Absolutely, yeah. You could spend hours just telling us about all the people who are now <laughs> famous, well-known, sure. on-air people on TV and radio, and even, of course, the behind-the-scenes people that have been a part of the program at BCIT. And when I say the program, I should clarify for everyone that 
It's a TV program which was more of the behind-the-scenes TV operation. And the broadcast journalism program was those people you see, like Sophie Louis, for example, who was a radio grad, I realize. But That's right. people like that, uh, that was for them, broadcast journalism. And then, of course, the radio program itself. Can you give us a bit of a, you know, who's who list? <laughs> Well, yeah, I, I could go on for hours on that and, and profile some of the careers. I, I did a, just a back-of-the-envelope sketch here for myself. There must have been around 5,000 students who have gone through the broadcast program and now called the Broadcast and Media Communications Program at BCIT since the first door opened in 1964. So there must have been around 5,000, and of that, somewhere between 4,200, 4, 4,300 actually graduated. Though as far as I'm concerned, anybody who got their training at BCIT is uh, a nominal grad of the program. But say 4,500 actually got the piece of paper at the end of the two years, and the rest dropped out along the way or, or whatever. But then I start to think about all the different people, and I, I, I put together a list of of some of the folks that people would know. And Sophie Louie, you mentioned uh, global television every evening. Uh, Mike Colleen at the same time is on CBC. There's so many other people who are part of the, the reporters, Paul Johnson and and uh, Catherine Urquhart and a whole bunch of different people. Uh, the gal who ran the newsroom for the longest time uh, was Jill Krupp. And the uh, person who's now running global television and the newsroom is Bupinder Hundal people who are technically behind the scenes, but they're leading the team that, that brings the news and all the programming and so on to us uh, every night. Johnny Michelle, the guy who is head of CBC for BC and Alberta, he's a television grad. And on and on it goes. I, I thought we have three, two former and one current president of the BC Association of Broadcasters are all uh, grads of the program. Uh, Ken Kilcullen, Kevin Gemmel, uh, both previous presidents, and the current president, Rob Bai, uh, based in on Vancouver Island. These people uh, have risen to the top of the broadcast industry in British Columbia, and they're an example of, of people who are no longer on the air, but they lead the broadcast crews that entertain and inform and so on. And we've got people all the way across Canada. Uh, uh, look back east, uh, Gillian Finley and Diana Swain were the top CBC people. Uh, got their start at BCIT. Lots of people in Alberta, Buzz Bishop, who's on the air at a number one morning show in uh, Calgary. People who have gone into politics. You know, there's the current mayor of Kelowna, Colin Bathram, is a journalism grad, and former mayor of Prince George, Dan Rogers, and Ted Schellenberg, who was an MP for years, and on and on it goes. So people have moved on to uh, into other things. People who own advertising agencies have been really big in the marketing world. The, the, the program has had a phenomenal influence both on the air and off the air in British Columbia and indeed around the world. There's people on the air in Hong Kong and, and one gal is based now in New Zealand. Uh, she was living in Thailand doing a show in Thailand, also in uh, Tokyo at FM America and also in Hong Kong. Three radio stations she was on the air at the same time. It's all pre-recorded, of course, from, from her beach house in Thailand. So those people have had phenomenal influences on the, the, the world of broadcasting, and they all got their start at BCIT. I just want to make a little valley reference here. Diana Swain is from Chilliwack. Yes, she is too, yep. Mm -hmm. And uh, you mentioned uh, Mike Colleen on the CBC Evening News. His co-anchor, or the co-anchor, is Anita Bath, who's a BCIT grad as right. well. Yes, that's right too. And now, I didn't know Anita, but yes, you're right about that. I just want to mention a couple more here, Brian. Kevin Lim and Sonia Sadu, who do the yeah, KISS Radio I... Morning Show in Vancouver, which is heard throughout the Fraser Valley as well, and they are both grads of the same year at BCIT. And Kevin, uh, and I believe Sonia too, uh, they're going to be hosting uh, an upcoming uh, graduation event for BCIT. Mm, fantastic. And I would be remiss if I did not also mention their competition <laughs> down the <laughs> aisle, or down the dial, I should say, uh, Holly Conway on the Virgin Radio Morning yep. Show. And there's also over at CKNW, and this is just a couple, uh, John Jang and Ed Garcia work there. And mm -hmm. uh, on Amber Belzer is a traffic reporter yep, yep, in yep, Vancouver. Got her on my list, yeah. Yep. 
Oh, yeah, I don't want to steal your thun- I don't want to steal your thunder here. But and and one other, uh, Brittany King, uh, on Vancouver Island Television uh-huh. as well, does the weather. Yeah, John Shorthouse, who is known uh, to the world through hockey uh, and hockey broadcasts. Uh, I started in my night school class, radio intro, and uh, picked him out as a, a real comer right away. And then, of course, he was great as a, as a student in school and now uh, does that. So many of the, the sports fraternity, too. I think of people like uh, Brooke Ward and Joey Kenward and, and Dan Russell for years on uh, on CKNW and Robert Adair, Lee Powell, all people who have really established their names in the sports world. And these people got started at PCIT. You had uh, Roy Haffley on uh, a recent podcast, and Roy got started at BCIT as well. Not taking anything away, if that's the right way to put it, from the two-year program, but there are some students that realize after one year, maybe they've got enough of it, they can take the one-year certificate and try and take their chances of getting into the industry that way. Or people actually give them an opportunity and they never look back. Gloria Makarenko on CBC is, is one such example. Uh, Glo uh, left BCIT, worked the summer up north, and then came back uh, to town. But somebody offered her a job, and look at her today. And so she's the kind of person I say I proudly call a graduate, even though she doesn't have that piece of paper. But she's done so well and got her initial training at BCIT. And as you know, the second year is so focused on actually doing it. You learn all the theory in first year and you apply it almost immediately. But in second year, it's that day by day application over and over again. People like Gloria were able to actually do that. They got that good solid foundation in first year and then did it from then on. And on occasion, and this is a great credit to the program at BCIT, on occasion you'll have someone who has been working in the industry for a year or two uh, in the smaller radio markets And they realize, you know, I don't quite have the complete package. I don't have all the tools yet. And they actually sign up to get into BCIT. Yes, that's right, because they work with BCIT people and they see them with their wealth of knowledge. Uh, Somebody said to me years ago, you learn in BCIT in two years what it takes most people 10 years to learn in the industry. Now, that may or may not be true. I don't know. I'm a, I'm a grad myself, so I had a, a really solid uh, background, so I would have a, you know, a biased answer to that. But it, it does seem that you've got a, a huge amount of, of, of knowledge uh, in your background when you graduate after two years of BCIT. So people in the industry often see that. And they say, where did you learn that? How did you know that? Well, I got some training. And, you know, BCIT has always tried to train on a broad basis. It's not just to be on the air as a disc jockey or be behind the scenes as a production person or a copywriter or whatever. They give you all the training in all the various different venues and so on that you would get in the broadcast industry. So with all that training in your background, you can slip into any job that's available and move your career forward from there. A number of the Indigenous students from all parts of the province have been a part of the program as well. Yes. Uh, one who immediately jumps to mind is uh, Lynn Turbasket, who came from uh, the Penticton area. And uh, Lynn was great. And she uh, came into the program. She worked so hard. And I got her a practicum. Uh, with a, an indigenous station in the northern part of the states. And, of course, she had the ability to go and, and, and work in the states and so on. So the the guy who ran the station called me about three weeks in, and he said, I have a problem with your student. And I'm thinking, a problem with Lynn? She's wonderful. Why would they have a problem? I said, what's the problem? He says, I can't find her off button. <laughs> and I found that to be a huge compliment because she was so dedicated and energetic and, and so on. She worked for a number of years with Northern Native Broadcasting, and she's been involved in, in various different things over the years. Uh, uh, Robert Pictou, uh, who's a television grad, is now uh, doing television up in, um, in uh, the Terrace uh, Smithers area and uh, doing very, very well. Lots of really neat people in in our history at BCIT. Chris Duncan was a student from uh, the New Hazleton area, and he went up to the Smithers New Hazleton area to uh, work at radio in his hometown. Yeah, yeah. And a lot of people have done that over the years. You know, they've come from the interior, 
and there are so many beautiful places and, and great markets in the interior. And it, it used to be the rule back in your day and my day, uh, as we were starting out, uh, you tended to go out of town and then eventually make it back to Vancouver. With BCIT, that started to change. A lot of people started going to jobs uh, in Vancouver. But then a lot of people went to a Kelowna or a Kamloops and never came back. You know, they said, I'm putting down roots here. Howie Reimer, who does uh, mornings in uh, Kelowna, Peter Olson, who just recently retired, uh, in uh, Kamloops, I'm sorry, uh, Peter Olson, who recently retired. You know, these are great people who have uh, have had their entire careers in the interior because it's a wonderful place to live, and uh, they just didn't enjoy life in radio in the interior. Andrew Lindsay. Uh, people like that. Yeah. Sandy Heimlich in uh, in Kamloops, a journalism grad. So many people who've uh, who've embraced that. And then there's the people who who've gone uh, in regular touch uh, on Facebook with Paige McFarlane and Doug Ozeroff, uh, who both got into government work in Victoria. Both are now retired. And <laughs> I've been retired legitimately for years, but I see these other uh, folks who I taught at one point in time, and I think, no, no, you're too young to be retired. But there they are. They They've, they've had wonderful careers, done very, very well in various different venues, and they're retired and living at large. I want to mention Angela Sargent because, mainly because, and I hope Angela doesn't mind me saying this, but she was a mature student when she started she at BCIT in the radio program. By that, I mean she was in her 40s, and she was someone who had raised her kids and done all that, but she thought, mm, I really like this radio thing, and she and was one of the best students and worked uh, for quite some time at JR Country and other stations. Yep, and Angela has done very well. And we have a, an interesting connection. We were talking one day, she's British, of course, uh, and I have a fascination with the legends of King Arthur and so on. And we were talking one day about that, and, and she said, have you ever seen the round table in Winchester uh, Great Hall? And I said, yeah, but I was really disappointed. I was there in 1978, and they'd taken this huge round table, which, of course, has nothing to do with King Arthur. It was to do more with King Henry VIII. But anyway, they'd taken it, and they'd set it down from the wall, and it was sitting on the floor. It's about 13 feet across, and it's, it's being worked on by a bunch of people. And I said, I think they were testing it, and they were dating it. And she said, did you ever have any idea who was the person who actually dated that? And I said, no. And she said, it was me. So she was a graduate student at the time. And she was doing the archaeological dating of the wood in this uh, King Arthur's Round Table. Uh, she was a great student in broadcasting. And like you say, she uh, worked for years uh, in the industry. Wonderful person. Absolutely. We could go on and on for hours on this, Brian. And <laughs> we could. <laughs> we could. We could indeed. But it's it's one thing, and, and you have been involved in so many areas and uh, of not just broadcast, but just in, in the community in general. A yep. lot of us are grateful for all that you have done over the years. Red Robinson, this is somebody that many people know, and, and Red is a friend of ours, and you know, Red, he's in his 80s now, and uh, boy, what a legacy he has, huh? Yeah, he's had a huge influence. Uh, Red just turned 83 on the 30th of March, and uh, so just in the last week or so. Uh, Red has had uh, a wonderful career. He's been somebody who, who uh, he and Frosty and a few others, Dee McCormick, uh, these were all people who I listened to on the radio back in the early 60s and thought, I I'd love to do what they do. And I've known Red for years, and we've worked on many different things uh, together. Uh, his daughters were both night school students of mine, and then Kelly came into day school. The, the Robinson family has been very influential in the broadcast industry, putting Vancouver on the map. You know, Red is is uh, in the uh, Rock and Roll Hall of Fame uh, the, 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 uh, in, in Cleveland. He knows so many people in the industry. And he's written several books now on it and so on. Quite an influence, certainly influential for me, I'm sure for you, and so many other people. Well, one thing that never is hidden by you, Brian, is your passion. <laughs> <laughs> 
Well, I, and I, I've, I've been told a number of times, and I, I didn't even realize that I uh, displayed that, but I guess uh, hearing it enough times, and I thank you for saying it again, I am passionate about this business. I'm a believer in radio. Uh, the radio business has its challenges. All of uh, media uh, have their challenges right now. So many people listen to the radio. You know that, that in North America, and there are uh, surveys done on a regular basis by various different groups which monitor this sort of thing, and in North America, 9 out of 10 people still listen to the radio every day. We have so many opportunities with our iPhones and our iPads and all the different social media and so on and television and whatnot, but 9 out of every 10 North Americans listen to the radio every day and that number is really unchanged in the last uh, 20 years or so very interesting well the thing i always loved about radio and i have said this many times over the years is the fact that it only involves one sense and that is hearing and uh, you can actually be painting if you want to and have music on in the background or a, a talk show or something uh, that's right whereas you can't do that when you have to stare at a screen yes and with that, that one sense, you also create then a theater of the mind. So every song that you hear, uh, every commercial that you hear, every entertainment and information bit that you hear on the news or, or maybe a little story that the disc jockey uh, shares with you or something like that, that then creates uh, a visual image in your mind. So while you're painting or uh, doing housework or whatever it might be, driving along, you enter the theater of the mind with uh, listening to radio. It's a wonderful medium. Do you think there's something in the water in the neighborhood we both grew up in in South Burnaby that leads us to <laughs> leads us to the path of talking and being on the radio? I don't know, but it, uh, I, I sure do appreciate it. It's wonderful. Yeah. Okay, Brian, it's always a pleasure to chat with you, and all the best. Thank you, sir. Glad to be with you today.